First, I want us to look at uh, the household dietary diversity scale. Uh, this one looks now at the access to, to, di uh, to diet um, and then uh, the access to food. <laughs> then we have also months of adequate household food provision. All right, so let's start with the first one. Eh? So, um, the household dietary diversity scale is the average number of different food groups consumed by the household. Okay. It is the average number of different food groups consumed by the household. So we are going to be looking at food groups and seeing in the last 24 hours, what, which of these food groups has the household consumed? And then for every group, we are going for every group that has been consumed, we are going to record it to one. So we want to have a yes and no, a yes and no. And then we're going to record that yes and no to ones for yes and zero for no or no for zero. Okay. And then we are going to find out, we're going to sum everything for those um, for those questions. And then we are going to find the average. Okay. Now, so the average has to be in, uh, in terms of food groups. So the average has to be a whole number. It cannot be a decimal number because we are looking at food, uh, the number of food groups. Now, so what is the purpose of this uh, indicator or this score? So um, it mainly, mainly assesses the economic access to food or uh, the ability to produce, purchase, or otherwise secure food for consumption by all household members. All right. Now, uh, the only limitation is that it does not provide data on the nutritional quality of a person's diet. All right. But we are just looking at the economic access. And for us to look at this economic access, we usually use a number of questions. Eh? Now, we have the household data scale, and then we have or, or what we call the individual uh, data scale, and then we have the women dietary, uh, the data score. All right? So, now what is the difference between these two? All right? So, uh, the difference is that when we are doing for household level or uh, for household level, we are looking at the household economics access to food, dietary energy, all right? Then for the individual, we are looking for the quality of the individual's diet for, and most of the time, we usually look at women. So this one can be, a, you can either say individual or women. So it becomes uh, IDBS, or WDDS, all right? Um, it's, you can use it interchangeably, but usually you work with the WDDS for women. We rarely look at men. For, for everyone, we look at household. Now, the other part whereby um, we are interested in, where that comes out clearly, is in terms of the number of, in, uh, of food groups that are included in our calculations, all right? For the, uh, for the household, we usually look at 12 food groups. And then for individual level, we look at nine uh, food groups. So what are these food groups? Uh, what food groups are we looking at? Now, uh, the food groups that we are looking at um, are these, all right? Uh, sometimes we split, we split them, sometimes we don't. Huh? And here, we have cereals. You can see the examples. So if they have taken cereals within the last 24 hours, then you can either sign in a yes, that is one, a score of one. If they have taken anything under white roots, white roots and tubers, such as potatoes, white cassava, and other food made from roots, you also do a one. If not, you do a no, 
and you code it as zero. All right. So on so here here are the questions. Yeah. So we we have all these yes no yes no yes no. These are the questions uh, that you need to have on your on your questionnaire. All right. So it's simple. Did you or anyone else in your household eat um, ate yesterday during the day and night any food made of oil or fat or butter? Now, I want you to understand that we have food groups. We have the food consumption score food groups. And then we have these, the household dietary diversity uh, score food groups. I hope that is clear. Now, for food consumption, it's just simply um, we should look at nine food groups. Also, when, when calculating, we just look at eight food groups. That is for food consumption score. For household dietary diversity score scale, sorry, um, we look at uh, for individual or for household, we look at nine food groups. Sorry, we look at 12 food groups. And for individual, we look at nine. All right. So what are these food groups? We can see we have vitamin A rich vegetables and tubers, and then dark green leafy vegetables. Then we have other vegetables. We have vitamin A rich fruits, other fruits. We have organ meat and flesh meat. We have eggs. Uh, then we have fish. Now. If you are doing, uh, we also have legumes, nuts, and seeds. We have milk. You can see that they are here they are split into two, I think three uh, food groups. These are just generally vegetables. All right. Then we have fruits. These two are just basically fruits. Then we have organ meat and flesh meat. This will come under one. All right. Meat and so you become either as meat, then we have fish and seafood, legumes and nuts and all that. Now, this just are generally, this is the board that you can use. This is generic, uh, the generic food group that we have. Now, when you are setting up your questionnaire, all right? When you're uh, setting up your questionnaires, as uh, these are what you might want to use. These are the food groups you're going to need to have, all right? This is for household dietary diversity score and then we also have uh, the food groups that you need to have for your uh, women dietary diversity score or the individual dietary diversity score so what is the difference so in here we have 12 uh, food groups in here so we have cereals we have white tubers and roots we have vegetables you can see now vegetables is only one but we know we have three um so if you have asked for um if you asked all the three uh, categories of vegetables, you are going to cut all of them into one. You can see three, four, five, meaning three subgroups, right? Uh, but to, to, to help you, uh, for me, I usually, I usually prefer having them as one, the way I've done it here. You see how I've done it here? It's only one, all right? You don't have so many things split into that because sometimes these questions are usually very sensitive. And you do not want to spend so much time, um, you know, probing about how, you know, what the members have eaten, All right? So you want to make it as, as short as possible, but uh, very efficient. Uh, let me just confirm. Is it recording? Yeah, okay. All right. Uh -huh. Now, so under vegetables, we just have vegetables. We have fruits. We have meat. We have eggs. We have fish and other seafood. So we can see if meat and eggs are different, fish and other seafood, legumes, nuts and seeds, milk and milk products, oil, fats, sweets and spices and beverages. So you want to put your questions to be based on, on this. If you are doing HDDS. My data set uh, is based on this. Now, the beauty about this, you only need to ask this question once. And then from the question that you have, you can also come and after generating your HDDS, you can also calculate your WDDS. If you are, if you, if maybe um, 
if you have vulnerable groups like women, you can also look at the WDPS. And you don't need to do other set of questions. You are just going to take what they have called here. Sorry. Uh, now, when you are setting up this, uh, let me just say this. Um, it has to be at individual level, all right? So, you, okay, you cannot do this for the, you cannot take this and replicate with this, all right? So the questions will remain the same. It's only that your context of analysis of data collection, your unit of data collection is not going to be the household level. It's going to be at individual level, all right? This one works well, especially in maternal child health care, all right? You also want to, as you are looking at the diet of the baby, of the infants, it can be maybe six to, six to how many months? Six to 23 months. You can also, during that time, you, knew, you need to also be tracking the diet of the mother. All right? Yes, we are not going to go so much into that because that is that um, health sector program. Unless you work with the health sector programs, I can expound on this. Uh, for our case, we are just going to just look at this, but also the method of analysis is the same, it's just that for this, we are using nine questions. And how do we group that? Um, we have statistics. So when you are calculating this, um, this and this are going to fall into one. All right. So uh, we're going to call starchy staples. All right. Then for the others, I, um, you're going to have dark green leafy vegetables. Then you're going to have fruits and other fruits. So we have vit vitamin A rich fruits. And you can see here they are very keen on, on access to the quality of your diet. Then uh, we have organ meat. And then we have the normal meat and fish. And then we have eggs, then legumes and seeds. Then we have milk and milk products. All right. So you can see here we don't have condiments. We don't have oil and fats. All right. So that is what you want to look out for. All right. So oil and fats, sweets and condiments, they don't exist under individual or women. All right. So how you are grouping your questions is very important. It's very important. Otherwise, you are going to, uh, it has to start with you guys deciding what kind of questions you are going to have during your work group when you are preparing uh, for data, uh, how you want to capture this data. And as you are designing your, your questionnaires. So be very keen on it, all right? Then, um, so how do we analyze this, all right? So um, the data diversity score is usually calculated by summing the number of food groups. I think I've said that uh, over a 24-hour recall period. So you create new food group variables for those food groups that need to be aggregated. All right. So how do you know that uh, whatever you have has to be aggregated? Now, also feel free uh, if sometimes you find that you do not want to ask twice this. Like here, I can see 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. Very good. All right. So you can have it the way it is. All right. Now, if you are, if you are doing the uh, DBA, uh, WDS, you have to group the starchy and the, root, uh, the cereals and white roots and tubers. You group them into starchy staples. All right. So how do you group that? Uh, in terms of grouping, it's quite simple. All right. So uh, so Mohammed. Sorry, uh, my internet today seems to be very unstable. Yeah, I, guess I don't know. Yeah. yeah, I can see it. it's not stable. Yes, it's not stable. Okay, like I was saying, uh, what was the last thing I said? We were discussing about um, the, the household. Yes, yes. Yeah. Okay. Now, so when you are aggregating, this will only come under. Um, so in terms of aggregating, 
is going to be based on uh, how you also decided to put your food group how you how you asked your questions all right um just a little bit here so under here if you see if you see under my questionnaire that is um both tubers i came here i've asked about vegetables leaves and spinach uh, please let me just confirm my recording uh, and also uh, resume the screen share okay it's recording good so you can see here um i've asked two questions about the seeds and then about the white roots and tubers then i've come to the second one where we have leaves uh, the normal vegetable and leaves is spinach onions tomatoes or crown or um, the rest then we also have you can see here i have not split i've just given a uh, one i've already i've decided now i'm not going to aggregate during the data analysis phase but i'm just going to aggregate it during data capture yes daniel yes but i want to ask you something yes yes consumption score What's the difference between these two? Okay, that's a very good question. Now, to Lisema, kuna the different dimensions of food security. Na kumbuka those different dimensions. Ama what you call pillars. Yeah, pillars. I know. Yes, we talked about of availability. So when you are looking at food security, we usually look at this you can decide your program can decide what what is your program more interested in is it trying to look at the availability is it trying to look at the access dimension is it trying to look at the utilization dimension or the stability dimension now when you come to food security food consumption score um the food consumption score uh it's uh, it's quite straightforward all right Um, let me let me just pick uh, from here. I think this one has been well put. All right, so it is a percentage of target population with acceptable food consumption score, all right? So here, um, the indicator is an indicator of food security status, and it considers only dietary diversity and food frequency, all right? But also the relative nutritional importance. So you can see here, we are very, um, um, we are looking at the diet number one we are looking at the frequency all right and then we are also looking at okay nutrition importance and the diet in the same thing uh, diet diversity we're looking at uh, how yes they are eating food they have never gone to sleep hungry but how how diverse is the diet that comes if you are trying to look at those aspects you use food consumption score when when you are using uh, the the dietary diversity score this is what we are looking at right the dietary diversity score then what we are more interested in is, is in the economic access to food not the diet diversity i don't know whether that is making sense are they able to purchase all right so we are looking at the purchasing power right and the other one we are looking at the diet diversity what i don't know whether this makes sense <laughs> i i know the terms are a little bit confusing since yeah i can see the terminology are the same yes. but what's the difference is how we calculate yes yes so it it comes out in how we calculate yes all right 
So and also in term- apply, yes. Can we still apply this and power query to calculate yes. to find it? Yes, yes. Everything I've said, I, I do not want to make your life difficult. When we when we have power query, we have everything. All right. So in your power query, in your power query, we have this data set here. Uh, I'm just going to go to switch to my So like for this data set, um, for the household, household HDD, uh, the HDDS, we don't need to do any aggregation because we already did that during data collection. So it's just going to be the, in terms of just coding the yes and no to ones and zero respectively, and then summing it up and then finding the average. So uh, maybe the other thing that will come out clearly between dietary diversity score and the food consumption score. Um, for dietary, we are looking at the number of food groups, the average number of food groups that each household is consuming. All right? Yes. And the other one, we are looking at the percentage or the proportion of household who have access to food. So HDDS is the average number of food groups, uh, while, um, while food security is a percentage of target population who have access, who have basic access or who have acceptable food consumption score. Later on, I'm going to show you how to wrangle all this eh? so that uh, you are able to get enough, a lot of insights out of your own data. So here is a percentage of population. The other one is the average number of food groups that the household is consuming. All right. So in here, uh, you locate your go to column. All right. Now, the first thing that you want to do, uh, let's start with the HDDS. Okay, this data was for HDDS, but the calculation is still the same. So we, here, I think um, you have to do the renaming. So in here, I think these are just simply serials. All right, so you're going to rename this. Once you rename it, you code, All right? So to code the yes and no, you do replace value. So for no, you replace with the zero. And for yes, you replace with one. Okay. And because we are going to be doing some mathematical operations, we have to change the data type to, uh, to whole number or to numbers so that we are able to do some calculations on it. So we change it like that. Then when you come here, this one here, uh, this is white roots. Um, white roots and tubers. Like that. You record again. 
so you do it until you have your 12 questions eh? so like that okay now if you have structured your questionnaire properly you shouldn't have any missing values so as you're coding make sure that you only have zero and one and nothing else now if you're not the one who actually structured this uh, data uh, if you're not if you are not part of the team that was used to generate or to build this data data instrument data collection instrument then you'll have to be very keen on the quality of your data make sure you do not have any missing values all right when you're doing this kind of cal calculation make sure you do not have any missing values if you have missing values um it means um there are certain things that you're going to have to do all right i will talk about when you do not have every all the values all right then you're also going to talk when you are trying to compare between um when you're doing the longitudinal surveys most of the time you want to compare between baseline and uh, and end line all right so um number one so if you're going to be comparing baseline and end line then you have to be very specific with the seasons in which you are going to measure so if maybe let's say it's the harvesting uh, the harvesting season of course the scores might not be really you know uh, like you cannot you cannot compare um, that period before before harvest with a period after harvest a period after harvest usually we have a lot of food supply so we might not really get the true picture of of, uh, of uh, food insecurity in those particular households also uh, durations like like holidays and like ramadan you know these are these are times when we have you know households are able to get food even if, even if at the household level they don't have that economic access to food all right there's usually a lot of plenty of food going uh going on um in terms of food sharing all right so those are some of the things you need to look at so let's say if you did, did your survey in april all right then you also need to when you are when you're doing your, uh, your end term make sure it has to be around that but it has to be around that particular time april all right don't do don't do april then for your end term you maybe do in december december is has a lot of festivities there's a lot of money going around there's a lot of food supply you might not really when you try to measure those two things you might not end up with the correct values or with the correct findings the finding is a word okay is going to misinform you right so when you're working with food security you have to look at it very holistically all right everything matters everything plays to the larger picture of things how you set up your questions how when you collect your data how you ask your questions and what questions you ask all right also the geographic context I think we talked about the geographic context. The questions we ask for urban target population is not the same with a dominant agricultural rural population, or maybe a dominant uh, pastoral uh, community or population. Those questions are going to be far, are going to be, uh, to be a little bit different, are going to vary. All right. So you need to be very keen. You need to you know. You need to take into consideration all these aspects. Then when you come to timeline. If it's during a rainy season, you have to compare during the same same time, all right? Before, uh, during the harvest, during the harvest season, and during the se so if you are doing for harvest season, when you'll be doing your follow up, it has to also to be for the second harvest season. So harvest season will compare with the harvest season, and then um, before the harvest. Uh, when they don't have that has that uh, large supply of food you also when you're doing also your follow-up it has to be during the same same season all right i think that was what uh, that is what is coming out very clearly and then um 
uh, we can continue with this. So I'm just going to call this vegetables. Uh, let me record this. So for yes, it's one. And for this is zero. All right. Change the data type to whole number. And then come to this. Uh, I'm going to call this fruits. Ah, okay, yes, yes, I think it is for the, okay, let me just say fruits, and then I'm going to specify, let me specify as the TDS. Okay, I'll call this just meat. One of the beauty about using ODK to capture data is that your data will come in very clean. Right? Yes, you won't have a lot of problems. And yes, do you see these calculations? The food consumption score, the CSI, the methodology is the same. It doesn't not matter whether you are calculating it at, at a data analysis level. You can also set up these calculations inside your data collection forms, inside your ODK forms, right? You can set up the calculation so that uh, the enumerator is able to get insights real time. Once they answer those questions, it will tell them whether the house is household sec is food secure or food insecure based on the various indicators you've decided to work with all right like for example uh, i'm going to show maybe uh, after after we have done this um supposed to be what these are eggs so we name the eggs uh please if you're wondering where i'm getting these values these are the food groups that uh, fell inside uh these are the HDDS uh, food groups. All right. Um, welcome back. So the food groups are alluding to uh, these are the food groups, huh? right? These are the food groups. So the other one should be fish and other seafood, legumes, milk, oil and fat, sweets and condiments. So let's continue. So from here, eggs. Uh, this should be legumes. Uh, the legumes, nuts, and seeds. So you can see here, I don't have to, I'm not running any, any formulas. It's, everything is automated, okay? 
if if there's any place I have to run formulas is the small things like some average, you know. But most of this, I don't know. We look up on all those summits have already it has already taken care of that. So here should be zero. oils and fats. This should be, uh, we call them sweets. All right, then spices and condiments. Right, I think we are almost through here. So the, the only maybe limitation is that um, when you are replacing or recording, you have to do for every column, All right? There's no shortcut for that. You have to do for every column, you have to do. And if you have more values, maybe like 10, you have to do for all those 10 values. So let me just change this to numbers. Right. So after we recorded, the next step is to create, is to sum up everything, all these 12 food books. All right. So at this point, um, based on the structure of my questionnaire, we've said that it has already been aggregated at questionnaire level. So I don't need to do any aggregation. Um, but if this was maybe the, um, if this were, if you were doing the, uh, the women, uh, the women dietary uh, diversity score, then we they have said that cereals and white fruits and tubers, you have to code all of them. So that like here, if it's, if it's cereal is zero, but white fruits and tubers is one, then we generate a new food group, an aggregated food group called starchy staples. All right, so how do we do that? Maybe before I, um, 
I, I continue with the, the HDDS. So like here, you'll come and say, um, come and say, uh, um, this should be add column. So custom column. So what we are going to do, we know if they didn't eat, it's a zero. If they ate, it's a one. So it's going to be just quite simple and straightforward. I can call this uh, starchy. Uh, starchy staples All right and here i don't need to do a lot of things right it's very dynamic this thing is very flexible so i only need to add uh, cereals and what i only need to add cereals and white tubers All right so i look for those variables i think they are somewhere here Look at the top. Okay, I think I'm going to cut it. Yes, here it is. So here, simply just add this and this and i have my aggregated now the only thing that i'm going to need to do is just to find where i have two all right where i have two is is, is that they ate both the cereals and the white tubers so if that is the case it's still going to be recorded back to one so i'm going to replace these two and replace it into one and click ok and then i can continue uh, aggregating all other things that I have. So for my HDDS, I'm still going to do an add column. This is for the household now. Uh, we are now calculating our score. So simply here, if it was H, it was if it's HDDS, you just type HDDS. If it's WDDS, you type WDDS. All right. One has 12 questions, another one has nine questions. That is the difference. So H D D S. And here I'll simply just um, go back to what I had. Aha. Uh -huh. So I'm going to start with series and add to white food and tubers. I'll add to vegetables. I'll add to Fruits. Then I'll add meat. I'll add eggs. I'll add legumes. I'll add milk and milk products. So here we take everything because oils and fats were still part of our list. So sweets and condiments all right and just like that we say okay all right so um maximum is 12 make sure you have that eh? maximum is what for hdds maximum if you're doing this is 12 so minus is running from 0 to 11. Oh, there's somebody who has not had this Hmm. That one might sleep hungry. <laughs> anyway, so what happens if we are doing for WDDS, right? For women. So still the same thing, WDDS. So I'm going to make an assumption that this was captured at um, individual level this time around so that we don't have to create another data set. So I cannot say for WDDS here, I'm going now to come and bring in, remember the starchy staples. So I'll start with the starch staples. Uh, then you have to come and see what food groups are you adding, All right? Um, okay, it will not take this option. No, it won't. It won't. It's not able. Yeah. Anyway, that, that is the point. Eh? 
is the, the method what i'm trying to say is that the methodology is the same once you have aggregated you still come and just add everything the way it is all right so now i'll just cancel this so that we are able to find the average okay uh, let's say yes and then just come back to file and select close and load all right so is it a minute okay uh, rejecting okay there it is i don't know why what's happening but um we wanted it to come the it is huh? so uh that's um, Now from here, I'm just going to do a refresh of this. And then I still have the name of my table. So I'll come under calculations and I'm going to type here the household dietary. Diversity. Should be score. Yeah, it is score. Actually, sometimes we usually get to use these two terms, scale and score, but they are not the same thing. Scale and score is not the same thing, right? So most of the time, um, so once you have this, uh, we want to insert our pivot table here so that we're able to uh, to generate that. Now, there are two ways you can do this. Eh? So we said when you're reporting, um, what are we looking for? We are looking for uh, the average. All right. So is the average number of different food groups consumed by the household? All right, the previous day or night. So in here, it's quite simple. You can either decide to insert it as a pivot table, which is the most recommended way. And then here, I'll just reference my table click OK. And in here, I don't need too much. I'll just look for the HDDS. Right here, I'll bring it under values. All right. Then you just come here and select value and field settings and click average. Go to uh, average. Don't, don't change it to anything. Under number format, we are going to reduce this to zero here okay. all right and then click okay all right so there you have it so on average uh, our target population can only access four uh different on average they are able to only access up to four food groups Okay. That is how we do it. The other one was to get, uh, maybe to get the total. What was the total? It was something 
224 and then divided by the number of households all right yes that's what we did as you can see here under people table it's, it's already taken care of now we said when you are working with this average you have to mention standard deviation all right you know how to calculate standard deviation eh? so when you are reporting this you have to report a uh, to the time uh, just give me a minute let me just save up this To use it with the standard deviation. Uh, um, when it comes to reporting, so uh, for this you don't need you don't need to have any visualization. Eh? If you're going to use a visualization, then we recommend you. I'm going to maybe later on. Uh, I think to, on Tuesday, on Tuesday we're going to see how to now convert all these tables into visuals and have them on a dashboard. So if you are doing a report, like uh, you can you can be doing a report on Word document, or you can also generate a a dashboard. All right, dashboards are able to be accessed by different people uh, in from remotely from different geographic areas of the globe. All right. So in terms of um, So, uh, reporting. All right. So, what was our value? Our value was So we, you know how we've gotten this, huh? is the total number of food groups consumed in the study area divided by the total number of households in the study area. So our data here, this data is at household level so that we are just taking the total number here. So in terms of, um, so I can do this. And then we can report. So we want to say the the household dietary dietary diversity score is. Four interpretation. So interpretation. How do you interpret this? Interpretation. On average. On average. Each. Every household. Every household. Is able. is 
able to afford up to four different food groups. All right. All right. So you can end at this level. But somebody might also want to know what are these food groups? If you really want to go down into diet, eh? you want to understand which uh, we already okay. We know that we are on average we have up to four food groups, but we might also want to know which are these these food groups. Hmm? Out of this um, in this population, what are the maybe the top four most popular food groups? Right. So when you come to the topmost four popular food groups, are uh, there something we are going to do here? But we are not going to do it today. We are going to keep it here from tomorrow. So from the data that you have, all right, you you want to find out. Uh, we've asked about all these food groups, but which are the top four popular food groups, and how do we calculate it? This will now usher us into data modeling. All right, data modeling. So we are going to pick up from there tomorrow. And then once we do that, we are also going to go to um, the months of adequate household food provisioning. Any questions up to this bit? Very much. Um, yes, I practice, I think. I will have no question, but after trying or attempting in the <laughs> surely in it, yeah, the, the question will come. Okay, okay. So maybe for your um for your assignment, I want you to go and read about um, the fundamentals of survey sampling. Fundamentals right. of survey sampling, okay. Yes, the fundamentals of survey sampling. And then I also, you can also read on um, the other one. Okay, yeah. that's the fundamentals of survey sampling. Read the whole thing. I think it's four pages. All right? The other one I can give you later. Maybe tomorrow. All right? Then we are going to have a discussion. I'm going to give you some, I'm going to ask you some questions tomorrow just to see how well you've uh, understood this concept. Then I can maybe add one or two things just to cement the whole thing, All right? So that is it for from me today. Thank you so much for finding time. Uh, I know it's a busy day for you. Um, yes, and I just want to say, have a lovely night and let's meet tomorrow. I'm sending the okay. video, um, uh, maybe in the next uh, 20 minutes once it's done. I'll just uh, notify you on WhatsApp so that you're able to also download it and review it on your own time. Thank you, Madam. Thank you very much for your wonderful delivery this knowledge. Thank you so much. It's a pleasure. All right. See you tomorrow. <laughs>